Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right. Well, the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 18 that David returned from the battle and uh, Saul said, whose son are you? And he said, I am the son of Jesse. And he said, well, listen, you're going to stick around here. You're going to be by me. And uh, But then enters another individual. And this was the oldest son of Saul. Now Saul's the king and his oldest son would have naturally been the king next. But the oldest son's name was Jonathan. And we find in this particular passage and the passages to follow, a really neat story about the friendship between David and Jonathan. And I want you to see uh, what it says. And, and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 18. Um, <clears throat> verse 1 says, And when it came to pass, uh, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him go to his home or to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him with his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of his robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So what happened here? Well, first of all, we find that Saul said, listen, I don't want you going home anymore. I want you staying here with us. And Jonathan uh, got to know David, and the two of them became such good friends. And there are times when we meet someone and we become just really good friends immediately, and we know that, that, uh, that you know, God has kind of brought you together to be friends, and that's a good thing. And Saul and, and David became good friends. And but like I said, Jonathan became good friends. Thank you. And, but, but here's the problem. You see, Jonathan was next in line to be king. But God had anointed David to be the next king. And so here were two guys that should have hated each other. And yet, instead, they actually loved each other. And this is really a strange thing. And there are times when there are people that we ought to hate, but, you know, God just gives us the ability to love them. And that's kind of interesting because, you see, God should hate us. Now, he hates sin, right? The Bible tells us over and over again that God hates sin, and you and I are sinful. So therefore, God should hate us. And yet, for some reason, God loves us. He doesn't love us because of our qualities and our good looks and who we are, you know. No, no, he loves us because he is a God of love, okay? You realize that? God loves us because he is a God of love. That is his nature, and that's who he is, not because of you and me, but because of him. And I think that it is possible for us to do that as well for us to look at someone that maybe we should hate, and maybe, humanly speaking, we have every reason to want to kick them. And, but instead, God gives us the ability to love them. And, you know, that's kind of the way Myra and I work. You know, we go places where there are people that are very different from us, and there's really no reason why we should love them, humanly speaking, and yet God gives us the ability to love them and to minister to them and to serve them. God by serving them. And that is one of the qualities of being a child of God, is that he gives you the ability to rise above human nature. And so we're going to see over the next few uh, weeks how that Jonathan and David loved each other with an unselfish love. And Jonathan was great at this. When he should have hated David, he actually loved him. So in any case, we need to look at our own lives and say, wait a minute, are there people that I don't like that I really should love because God loves them? Good question to ask. Hey, love you guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.